Yo, what's going on snipers and welcome to our finale of our Chicago Blackhawks franchise mode here in NHL 23. So I am pre-recording this episode uh, right after the last episode just because these episodes are going up days apart. You might find it a little bit weird that I'm uploading this on a Saturday, but I had to uh, find a way to uh, get these last few episodes out before NHL 24 drops. So this is the last official video of NHL 23, so kind of crazy. But uh, yeah, anyways, in last episode, if you did not catch it, we uh, made the playoffs again. We made a couple changes to our team throughout the season. We upgraded our center depth at the beginning of the season. We also upgraded our defensive core. And yeah, we made the playoffs with a 43-28-11 record. Now, the only problem that I'd say we suffered is we lost our starting goaltender for the rest of the playoffs with an injury. Um, and it was out till like June the 8th. So he will not return at all this postseason. And he could win the Vesna still this season. Uh, but that injury cut his chances a little bit uh, short, I think. I don't know if he's going to win it or not. We'll still obviously find out once we get to the recap portion of this episode if we get eliminated early on or not. But I'm hoping that we can have a good playoff run here because we had a pretty solid season, all things considered. We were the best defensive team at one point. It fell off quite a bit. But you can see in terms of the entire season-wise, we are still one of the best teams in a lot of categories. We were 7th best in the league. We were top 5 in offense. In defensive play, we were also top 5, even though we finished 7th. We still had one of the best power plays in the league at number 2. And then in terms of the penalty kill, we were still up there at number 6. So technically, we're top 6 in every single category, which is pretty awesome. And then we also had the most shorthanded goals in the league. So there's a lot of good little statistics for having such an average record. So I am a little bit excited about that. I think that gives us maybe a bit of a psychological edge. Like we might not be the most best looking team on paper in terms of wins. But we had a lot of underlining stats that could help push us to maybe a Stanley Cup in this final season. But obviously Arizona standing in our way and uh, they're a pretty good team. They are a pretty good team. I didn't actually take a look at how they did during the regular season compared to us. So they were bottom of the division that got in. Seven points less than us. They scored way less goals per game. So they're not a good offensive team apparently. But they are a good defensive team. Probably because of that goaltender. Their power play was tragic. Their penalty kill was good. Yeah, they're a good defensive team. That's basically it. But uh, let me show you guys what their roster looks like. Just in case you forgot from the end of last episode. And then, yeah, we'll get into round one, considering if we go to the cup finals, that's going to be in this episode as well. And that would be a really long episode if we get knocked out earlier. We obviously want to recap everything, see who retires in this final season, take a look at player stats. So we'll turn it into a recap if we get eliminated quite early on here. But this is Arizona again, just in case you forget. They have a couple good players like Barnett in vacation, Manderville as well. As well. Kilger is solid, Ference is solid. So you can see this is a good offensive core, even though they kind of didn't simulate like a good offensive core. This defensive core doesn't look good on paper, uh, but they were great defensively. We did trade for Gone there at the beginning of the season to bring in a center, so I'm hoping that center kind of knows a thing or two about Arizona so we can kind of exploit their weaknesses. And then they have the goaltending upper hand with Svedberg and our former backup in Gustavo Blackburn. Um, obviously, they have the goaltending upper hand just because of Tayukin's injury, which still really, really sucks because Tayukin was doing so well this year, and uh, that injury might hurt his chances at that Vesna or maybe even a Stanley Cup. Well, actually, he would still get a Stanley Cup ring if we won the Cup this year, but you can see over these last two years, he's really started to turn it on. This year especially, he was doing so well, and then he gets limited to only 56 games, and he'll get no playoff games as well. Last year in the playoffs, he was kind of streaky at times, but he did almost win us a Stanley Cup. So this guy um, is kind of probably my favorite goalie in this series, my guess. But unfortunately, he will not get the play in the postseason, I don't think. Unless the postseason goes past June 8th, which it honestly could, but I don't really know. Let's get into this first round matchup and see if our season continues or will we be knocked out in round one. And then after that, we will probably... Go to the awards and all that stuff already. Take a look at the retirements. And then anybody that still has not retired will definitely take a look at their career stats as we go through it as well. But here we go. Game number one on home ice. Can we find a way to start off the playoffs on a good note with Devin as our goaltender? 
first period. 1-1, one, one, I'll take it. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> so Holly opens the scoring for us, which is good to see young guys scoring. And uh, Tommy Amonte. I almost want to say Tony Amonte because Tony Amonte literally played for both Chicago and Arizona, which is kind of funny. Or Phoenix back in the day, I should say. Shots are 10 to 10. It's a 1 1 game, so pretty even period. Can we break this deadlock? Second period. 2 1. Let's go. It is Gustafson. So that's a fourth liner scoring, so it's good to see a couple lines contributing because that fourth line was actually pretty good in terms of offense this year. They were averaging like around uh, 20, 30 points between everybody, which is pretty good. So if they could uh, continue doing that in the playoffs, that would be great because obviously the depth scoring is the most important thing. Let's see what happens here in the third period. See if we can lock down game number one. Hopefully this episode doesn't end up being like two hours long if we end up winning the Stanley Cup, but cannot promise anything. You guys will be able to tell anyways before we start watching this episode, but let's see. Are we going to be able to lock this one down? Final five minutes of the third period. And we are going to lock it down 2-1. to one. We took a late penalty, but we do have a great defensive effort in game one. That's exactly what we kind of need. I brought in another DFD. We have three DFDs on our team, so that's a good shutdown game. So Holly from Bennett and Bruce, Gustafson from Wharton, and Neil. So Neil picks up an assist against his old club. Three stars of the game, Devin, who was really good in that first game. Maybe Devin's going to surprise me this year. Considering he was the backup throughout the season, and he kind of struggled as the backup. But maybe he's going to be a good playoff goaltender for us. And uh, maybe carry on uh, the legacy of Tayukin. Even though Tayukin's not dead, he's still out with a torn groin, which is not a nice injury to have, probably. And Gustafson got the game-winning goal in that game. So anybody could score in this series, it seems like. Hopefully we could get some goals from Vance as well, considering... This is probably his last year in the NHL. He didn't reach 1,000 goals, which kind of sucks. But uh, if he doesn't retire in the offseason, I might still play this outside of YouTube in a bit just so we could see if he actually hits 1,000 goals. But he's likely going to end, I think, with 990 if my math was right. But I'll have to take a look at that when we get to the recap portion of this episode. But let's uh, get into game number two. Waste no time. It's a good first game. Not the best offensive, but still good defensive play. First period. Scoreless, I'll take it. Another good defensive period. So far, so good on the defensive front. The offense definitely can improve, but if we're going to suffocate teams, I don't mind that at all. But we definitely need to have goal scoring from guys like Coburn, who had 47 goals this year. So that would be nice to see him maybe get come through here a bit in the second. Second period. one nothing. There we go. And it is Coburn. Why is it when I mention a specific player, they tend to somehow score? Unless I just always go with the big, uh, the players that we know score. But still, that is random. Short and a goal on Svedberg. We're out to him 22-16. Can we get some insurance here in the third period and lock down game two? Pretty good start on the defensive front again in this game. Penalty kill here in the third period, and they get a goal shortly afterwards, Manderville. And then they get another one right afterwards as they got another power point. God damn it, guys. Don't blow this game, Pond. Let's get another one back. Our offense has definitely not been anywhere here in these first two games. Come on, boys, please. And it's going to be a tie series at one. As after we won 2-1, to one, they win 2-1. to one. And it's, yeah, tie series headed back to Arizona. Coburn with our only goal shorthanded from Kachuk and Burrish. Hmm. Three stars of the game. Yeah, their goaltender has been good, and our goaltending has been good. So I can't complain on the defensive side of things, but I definitely need to find a way to maybe get our offense going a bit here. Oh, no. And Weston Warden, another former Coyote, actually, has strained his hamstring. He's out till April the 26th. Let's just go our place player for now, but I'll have to maybe make some adjustments because of that. That's not good. That's uh, our leading point getter from the regular season. So that's definitely going to even hurt us more so in terms of points and scoring. Oh, boy. Uh, you know what? I might be okay with putting Kudobin up there. But he is a two-way forward, so probably not. Who do I put up there, Holly or Bruce? Plus two. Uh, we go with uh, Holly on that line, I think. We will probably go Brookbank as a second liner and move Vance over to the right side here on the third line. Ooh, yeah, we'll go with something like that. We still have pretty good-looking lines for the most part without Warden, but still kind of sucks. Considering this is our last playoff run, we obviously want to be as healthy as possible, but 
Right now, the injury bug has not been kind to us. <laughs> uh, we could also swap technically if we want to get our offense going. Move Bennett and Neil, but then that gives it a mine or an even zero on the chemistry. Let's try this for now. If it doesn't work, we could always swap uh, Bennett and Neil or Atkinson and Neil. These three guys are definitely interchangeable. So we'll see if we're going to make any changes after this game. But hopefully our offense can do well while Wharton is out because he will be missing the next three games, which is kind of crucial for the series, I feel like. Because obviously if we end up losing two of these next three games and he's back, we will be still trailing in this series. So let's see if we can have some good road games in Arizona and um, take a series lead here in game three. First period, 2 nothing else. That's a great defensive period, and our offenses came through as well. Curtis Coburn again on the power play, so he's starting to warm up. And then Neal scores against his former team, which is also good. Shots are 13-10 to in favor to Yotes, but we're up 2 to nothing. Can we get some insurance? Second period, 4 nothing. Let's go. Coburn again on the power play and Bennett, so our power play is all of a sudden starting to contribute a lot. Three goals in this game for the power play, I think. And Coburn has three goals in his last four periods, I think. Or three goals in his last three periods, actually. Yeah, because it was the second period last game, then this is the third period. Actually, no, it would be the last four periods. My math is all over the place right now. But, yeah, we're up 4 nothing. Well, let's lock this game down here in the third period. This is a much better game. Still has that good defensive element to it, but also the offense has come through, which is also really good for us. Because if both of those work well together, we'll win games. So... Final five minutes of this third period. And we are going to take the first game in Arizona by a score of 4 nothing. as Devin picks up a shutout. Devin has been great. Devin has been great as we win two of the first three games of the series. So Coburn from Kudobin and Kapanen. So Kudobin gets thrown into the lineup, picks up an assist. I like it. Then Neal from Holly and Coburn. Coburn from Bursch and Kalpanen and Bennett from Holly. So Coburn with a three-point game. Can't ask much more out of this guy. He'd probably be our future captain after Vance retires, my guess. But since we aren't getting another season in this, but you know, but he will be. But yeah, Devin's been fantastic. Fantastic. He's only allowed uh, two goals in these first three games. And we've scored a total of eight goals. So we're doing good on the defensive front. Offense definitely can still use a bit of work. But we had a good offensive game there in game three. Let's hope it continues into game four. Even without Wharton, we're still uh, we're, st we're starting to find ourselves offensively, which is good because once he comes back, hopefully everything kind of continues to click on that sense. Here we go, game four. Let's waste no time. See if we can take a 3-1 stranglehold. First period, 2-1 Arizona. So there's our worst defensive period of the series, but Dallas Bruce did open the scoring, which is nice. Gariba and Ferentz score for them. Shots are 14 to 12 in favor of us, but we're only down by a goal. Can we find a way to tie this game up in the second or even grab two goals of our own? Second period. 4 to us. Let's go. That is a good period. Our offense breaks through, and then we have a good defensive period. That's a really big response there. So Carter scores to make it 2 2. Brookbank gets a power play goal for us to make it 3 2. And Bennett scores. Our power play has been good in this series. And now we're a period away from going up 3-1 to one on the Yotes in this series. Can we lock this one down here in the third period? Come on, boys. You got this. You had a good lockdown period last period. Just got to do it again. As we killed off a penalty, which is nice. Final 10 minutes of the third period. Still up by those two goals. And we are going to take both gains in Arizona. Holly gets the empty netter. And we are one win away from the second round of the playoffs. Let's go. Let's freaking go. So Bruce from Bennett and Holly, And then we have Carter from Bursch and Laxo. Didn't expect Carter to help out with the goals in the playoffs, but he did. Brookbank and Bursch. Or Brookbank from Bursch. Bennett from Yokel and Brookbank. And Holly from Coburn and Neal. Three stars of the game. Brookbank, Bennett, and Holly. How was uh, the stats from Devin in this game? Pretty good, again. Yeah, I've had no problems with Devin so far. Which is weird, because once Tyukin got injured, I thought that was going to hurt our playoff chances. But maybe we needed to have ourselves our backup in net to win a Stanley Cup, and it's not our starter. I don't know. So we're up 3-1 to one on the Coyotes. 
Um, and no series has currently ended except for the Philadelphia Flyers in the Eastern Conference swept the Sins. Huh. Okay. Don't think we need to make any changes. Wharton is not back until next game, if there's a next game of the series. But so far, our offense has found itself without Wharton. We have nine goals in our last two games. After the first two games, we only have three. And we're still playing on a good defensive level because we've only allowed four goals in four games. Let's see what happens here on, uh, wow, my birthday of 2045. Jeez, I, this would be almost my 50th birthday, I guess. It'd be a year away from my 50th birthday at that point. Holy crap. That is uh, a little bit scary. A little bit scary indeed. But here we go. Let's get into this game. See if we're able to knock out the Yotes. First period. 2-0 Coyotes. Not a good period there. In terms of defense, I mean, we could still have a good defensive period in the second like we did last game and maybe claw back into this, but not a good start for the team. Kilgur and Vermette score. Shots are 13-10 in favor of us, though, so if we could at least get one goal back in the second period, maybe we could claw back into this, but if we are still down 2 nothing or by worse, there's a good chance that we're going to go back to Arizona for Game 6. So let's see what happens here in the second period. See if we could get on the board. And we do, but they also get on the board. So it was 3 nothing at one point on a shorthand goal from Amonte. But Asher Vance scored. There's his first goal of the playoffs. Love to see the big man score. Uh, so, yeah, we're only still down by two goals. We're still outplaying them in a way. 22-18 in shots. But we're down by two goals. So we need to have a strong third period here or else we're going to a game six. Come on, boys. Penalty kill. And we get a shorthanded goal from Dallas Bruce. That's a big one there from Dallas and we tie it up. Asher Vance with his second goal, but Barnett answers back for them. Damn it. Why did they have to answer right back? And then they get another goal to go up by two goals. Damn, I thought we were going to have a comeback after those two quick goals. But then we give up two of our own. That sucks. That sucks. And we have our worst defensive game yet, but we also had an okay and offensive game. And yeah, we're going to a game six. Asher Vance still picked up two goals in that game. Maybe the final two playoff goals of his career. Who knows? <clears throat> so Vance from Carter and Atkinson. Bruce from Mara and Benino. And Vance from Kalpanen and Atkinson. Hmm. Will Wharton make a difference when he comes back into the lineup is the question. As Vance got first start of the game. If uh, Wharton could play like he did in the regular season, he will be massively helpful going into this next game. As he is full health, so we will take out Kudobin. And we will throw Weston Wharton in. <clears throat> and obviously, <clears throat> and obviously Wharton will go up into our top six. And we will swap this all around again. Like so. Perfect. Okay, Wharton. Let's see. Actually, let's hmm, try and see if we could do anything chemistry-wise. Nah, we're not going to do anything else with the lines. We'll just go back to what we had before, I think. Ooh, Yokola and Mara. Let's do that. Make a little bit of a change. And yeah, Devin's still been good. There we go. A little bit of a change for the next game, but uh, we need to lock this down because I have seen a ton of times where you go up 3-1 and then you end up losing three straight games. So can we win this series in six or are we going to a game seven to decide it all on home ice? Come on, boys. We got to give them a run for our money here in game six. Hopefully Wharton can make a difference. First period, 3 nothing us. That's exactly what we need. And it's in a natural hat trick for Johnny Hawley. Holy crap. What a play by the youngster. A hat trick in the first period. I don't think uh, Asher Vance ever did that before. So Johnny Hawley might be coming into his own here. Three goals, and that was still... There were still six minutes left in the period, so he could have scored more. We outshot them 18-6. to six. We just completely dominated that period. At this point, we need to just have a good shutdown period, and hopefully we can lock it down in the third. But will Johnny Hawley score any more goals in this game? Second period, 4-1. That's good that we got some insurance. Kilger made it 3-1 to one to cut into our lead, but Kachuk restored the three-goal advantage. Shots are 25-14 to 14 in favor of us. We're up by three goals going into the third. Can we lock it down and get ourselves to the second round? Power play opportunity here early in the third, and Vance scores on the power play. Looks like we're going to be going to the second round, which is great. This episode won't be as short in that sense. Let's go. 
Good to see Vance starting to score here in his last few games as well. And we got good offense from uh, him, from Coburn, from Hawley. And the depth scoring has been great. And we win 5-1. to one. Big response from Devin in that game after his worst game for sure of the playoffs so far. But Johnny Hawley in a natural hat trick in the first period. The first two ones were from Bennett and Yokola. Then he got one from Carter and Bruce. Then Kachuk got one from Bursch and Kalpinen. And Vance from Bennett. Three stars of the game. Hawley the first star. Bennett the second star with three assists. And another great performance from Dylan Devin. <clears throat> so we are on to the second round again. In six games. Pretty good. I won't even really look too much at the player stats. Actually maybe I should. But I don't want this episode being crazy long for this finale. But uh, let's briefly gloss over our player stats here. Hawley was fantastic in that first round. Bennett was good. The youth movement is in full effect. Bursch was fantastic. Jeez. For a guy that's getting power play time and fourth line time, five assists in six games was good. <clears throat> uh, Dallas Bruce was a bit quiet at times, but in general, I like our depth scoring quite a bit. Quite a bit. So there is all that. And then, yeah, Holly had five goals in that first round. A lot of players didn't score, but in general, really good depth scoring. Because everybody on the team had a point in round one. So it was a team effort and a great performance from uh, Dylan Devin. Hopefully he can continue that into round two. And the question is, who are we playing in round two? Who are we playing in the second round? It is going to be the Winnipeg Jets. <laughs> if we get eliminated, of course it would have to be the Winnipeg because that's likely my next franchise mode series. So, uh, that's funny. They were 8-1-1 one, one going into the playoffs, 45-31-6. Let's do a regular season comparison quickly and playoff comparison quickly. And we'll look at the roster. Uh, let's actually just go central since we're both in the central. We won our central division by only a point. Uh, we were better offensively. We were better defensively. We were better power play wise. And we were better penalty kill wise. So technically regular season wise, we were better in everything than them. Um, and then in terms of team stats here in the playoffs, if we go over to the Western Conference here, uh, they won their first round in five games. They were scoring four goals a game, which is better than us. We were much better defensively than them. They were much better on the power play at 50%, but we were still 38.5, which is good. And uh, we were better on the penalty kill than them. Hmm. They have not lost a game on their home ice yet. But they're 1-1 one one on the road. Okay. What is their lineup looking like? Because I think we have played them recently in the playoffs. But don't remember. I do not remember for sure. Let's see. Winnipeg. So, oh yeah, that Lindstrom guy we saw in the standings. Oh, the former franchise guy. Yeah, this guy was literally just drafted last year. I forgot about him. Six points in the first round. Yikes. So... That top line is filthy. That second line is filthy. Really good top six. And a very good third line. Jeez. Yeah, this is probably one of the better teams we've seen yet. Wow. Yeah, this is going to be tough. This is going to be tough. When you have an 84 as a third, a fourth liner. Yeah, I don't know if we have a chance. They have the best offensive depth I think I've seen this entire series. And their defensive core is no slouch either. They still got Klesla, Mendez, Erat's okay. Same with Jacobs. And then Pope and Nordstrom. Oh, wait, did we trade Nordstrom there? Or no? No, he was a different def it was a different Nordstrom, I think. Kind of. Goalie wise, they have chance glass. They have the goaltending, the defense, the offense. This is an underrated team. They finished below us in the standings, but I think they're technically the better team. Which is not great. Hopefully we could cheese them out of this and get ourselves to the conference finals. Winner will face either San Jose or San, uh, Seattle. Which means if somehow we get on to the next round, we will have to face Sylvan Parks in San Jose. That's the guy I was trying to remember last episode, but forgot about it. And you still have Montreal and Philly and the Rangers in the caps. Okay, let's get into round two. Seems weird having to record multiple rounds, but that's the way this episode is going to run. Let's see what we got here. We got home ice advantage at least first period. 
Two nothing Jets. Ooh, Van Allen. That's a third line center that scored two goals in the first period, and they were 35 seconds apart. That's not good. Devin had a great first round, but uh, this team that we're going up against is a good offensive team, so you might see his numbers drop off a lot. And if he doesn't play good, maybe I'll give Hanzus an opportunity because why not? But for right now, we'll still stick with Devin for sure. Let's see if we can have a good second period and rebound from that second period. Hey, we do. I am surprised. Coburn and Hawley. These two have been great so far. Like I said, these two guys are our future of this team. Also, I would say probably Bruce would be up there. And also, Brookbank. Those four guys would probably be the best players on this team. As early as next season, Vance was to retire. It's a 2-2 game going into the third as we have came back from a 2-0 deficit. Can we take the lead for the first time in this game? Let's see what happens in this third. Come on, boys. Let's get that next one. It's been a pretty close game so far here. Final 10 minutes of the third period, still tied at two. Almost into the final five minutes, and Wharton scores. Let's go, Wharton. Coming back from your injury recently and picks up a big late goal, and that will give us the victory as we come back with three unanswered goals to win game one against a potent Jets team. Let's go. Let's freaking go. It's funny that both those goals from Van Allen were from the exact same people as well. Like, it was just like a face-off win, pass assist, and then a face-off win, pass assist type of thing, almost. But Coburn from Mara and Wharton, Holly from Bruce and Yokola, and Wharton from Yokola. But Holly's already up to six goals, and Coburn's up to four. Those two guys are difference makers, for sure. So Wharton, the first start of the game with two points, Van Allen, the second start for them, and Coburn got third start with the goal in six hits. He could bring it physically, too, which is kind of nice. It's good to have players that could do offense and also kind of bring that uh, mentality where they could wear down the other team, especially physically. Okay, good first game. Can we have a good second game as well? We didn't start off last game that well, so hopefully we can have a better first period at least. First period of game number two. 2-1 two, us, I'll take it. They did score first again, but Coburn and Hawley score again. These two guys are literally like, they're not on the same line, I don't think, are they? No, they're not on the same line. It's first and second line. But these two guys are like the, uh, the uh, what is it, dynamic duo on this team now. How uh, time has changed since uh, Vance and like Reefers or Vance and Brassois. It's now these two guys' show. Shots are 11 to 10 in favor of us. We're up by a goal. Can we get some insurance in the second, second period? Oh, that's not good. Devin has a bad period. He allows two goals. As now we're trailing going into the third. Rupert and Malkin. If anything, I was hoping that it would be still like a tied period or something going into the third. But to be trailing, that's not ideal. So now they're kind of coming back on us a little bit. Shots are still in our favor. 22-17. Can we find a way to tie this game up in the third? Come on, boys. Come on. We can't just rely on Holly and Coburn the entire time. Bruce has got to get in the on the action too. All the guys got to get in on the action. Vance, that'd be nice. Considering he was pretty good at the end of that Arizona round. Final five minutes. Come on, boys. Let's get a late goal here. Maybe even Brookbank and Lidstrom, the franchise guy for them scores. And we're going to have a tie series headed to Winnipeg. So pretty much the exact same thing that happened against Arizona where it was like the first two games. It was a tie series after that. And who knows what happens now that we're shifting over to Winnipeg. Because Winnipeg has not lost a game on home ice. That's one thing we got to take a note of. So Coburn's Frith from Wall uh, Wharton. I almost said Wally for some reason. Wharton and Mara and Holly from Yokola and Bruce. We need more goal scoring out of Dallas Bruce a little bit. If we want to win this series. But we got to definitely be uh, good in Winnipeg and win at least one game there. Because like I said, they're undefeated on home ice. That's where it kind of scares me now that we have a tie series. Well, let's go to edit lines here. Make maybe a little bit of an adjustment. Um, I know Coburn has been good. So I don't really know what I want to change. Um, Dallas Bruce has been... Six points in eight games is pretty good. But Vance is... Eh, actually, it may be okay to keep the lines the exact same on the offensive front. Hmm. Hmm. I'm trying to see if there's anything else I could do to affect chemistry a little bit. Hmm. You know what? Let's uh, put Raymond Carter up there with Kalpanen. 
and then Kachuk will play with um, Benino. The reason being is Benino is kind of a weak link on this defensive core, and hopefully Kachuk could be his anchor. And also it gives Carter a little bit more ice time considering he's maybe deserved it. I know we don't necessarily need to adjust a couple things, but might as well play a little bit with it and see if it helps out our team in any way. And sometimes I feel like if you don't make changes, the game kind of uh, doesn't reward you for that. If you do make changes, then the game does kind of reward you in a way like maybe a guy getting thrown in the lineup, score some goals. Like I didn't even call up Connor Recchi at all yet, and he's in the AHL, but we could call him up. And if I called him up and put him in the lineup, he might score in his first game. But then after that, go dead silent. Let's see what happens in game three. See if we can get a win in Winnipeg. They've won all their games on home ice so far, so a little bit scared about that. Let's see what happens here. First period, 1-0 Jets. Lindstrom again, so that franchise guy starting to score, which is not ideal. We are only down by a goal, though, going into the second, so hopefully we could uh, rebound in the second, get ourselves a goal of our own or a couple goals. We are out shooting 14-10. Let's see what happens in the second period. See if Coburn or uh, Holy or Fans or somebody that gets score can get on the board. Second period. 2-1. Okay, I'll take it. Holly did score again. Tied the game up, but Lidstrom once again scores. So Lidstrom's starting to become a bit of a problem. We definitely need to find a way to get him off the score sheet. We're trailing 2-1 going into third. We're out to him 25-22. Can we find a way to tie this game up in the third? Come on, boys. Let's tie this up. I know we have the offensive capability. We just need to get our goal scoring coming from Vance and stuff. He's only got three goals, so he's got to come through with some more soon. He's not going to just go dead silent, right? <laughs> Final five minutes of this third period. Still down by a goal. Penalty kill. Nicely done. And late, and we do not tie it. We end up falling 2-1. to one. That was a close game. One we could have easily won, but unfortunately we do not. Because of that late second uh, period goal. Lidstrom scores both of their goals. Holly scored from Vance. Hmm. I do still like Devin's play, and I like our defensive play. But the offense has been a little bit inconsistent at times. We are still getting the same guys scoring a lot, but we aren't... Uh, like, Vance has gone quiet, and that might be a little bit problematic. So, let's maybe go ahead and adjust our offensive lines a little bit. Because Dallas Bruce, to me, has been a bit concerning. So, I'm going to swap him and Wharton. Because Warren can play left or right side. So we'll move Dallas Bruce to the top line to see if he can get going. And if he can't, maybe we make some further changes. But I think that's the only thing we're going to change around here a little bit. Burrish was really good in round one, but Atkinson's been actually pretty terrible. I'm going to swap Atkinson and Burrish. Burrish has been the better of the two. I know it might uh, screw a little bit with like uh, morale, but yeah, let's do that. See if Burrish could uh, help out Vance a bit. Because if Vance could get going, it'll maybe give us a better chance as well. Because obviously now that we're trailing, we need to win a couple games here in a row if we want to get that series lead back. So we won game one and we lost two straight games. Can we rebound here and win a game in Winnipeg? Because if we lose this game, we need to win three straight games. And that's going to be pretty tough against this team, I think. First period. 1-0 us. That's a good defensive start. And Curtis Coburn has gotten back on the board. So, yeah, Coburn and Hawley have been definitely our best two players in this playoff run so far. Shots are 9-9. It's 1-0 for us after one. Can we get some insurance? Second period. 3-1. I'll take that. I will take that. Drew and Delorier, or I should just say Delorier at this point, made it 1-1. Uh, but Bennett and Wharton score. So the two playmakers... And we have a two-goal advantage going into the third. Can we lock this down and hand the Jets their first home ice loss of the playoffs? And then it's going to be a best of three, basically. Hawley makes it 4-1. Let's go, Hawley. Yeah, I'm really liking Hawley and uh, Coburn's performance, especially Hawley on the goal-scoring department because he's up to, like, nine goals, I think. Mendez makes it 4-2. to two. Vance scores. That's what we want to see. Vance getting on the board can see. Was a bit quiet so far in this series. And we are going to take this game by a score of 5-3. to three. Sedin got a late goal, but we do escape with the victory. And now it's the best of three. So Coburn from Neal and Kelpinen, Bennett from Wharton and Hawley, Wharton from Burrish and Coburn, Hawley from Wharton and Bennett, and Vance from Burrish. Let's go. Wharton, the first star with three points. He's been good since he came back from injury. 
Deloria gets the second star, and Johnny Holy the third star. Now it's like I said, it's a best of three, and we have home ice technically, so hopefully we could use that to our advantage. Because if we win this game, obviously then it's we need to win one of the next two games, but I still feel like this is a series that could go seven games at this rate. The Eastern Conference is all 3-1. Philly and the Caps look like it's going to be the Conference Finals in the East, and then both these ones are very undecided at the moment. So let's get into game number five. See if we can keep the momentum rolling. If we fall down 3-2, I might make some more adjustments, but can we take the series lead back and be one win away from the Conference Finals? First period, 1-0 us. Another good start, and it's Asher Vance again. Asher Vance, 38 years old, but not slowing down too much. He's got five goals in the playoffs, which goes a long way in the depth scoring, especially when you have now young guys like Coburn and Holly taking over. To have Vance contributing still is a great thing for this team. Shots are 8-4 to four in favor of us, but we're up one nothing. Can we get some insurance in the second? Second period. Ah, oh, it's another second period where we blow the lead. Let's turn the franchise guy again, and Malkin score, and we're trailing going into the third. Shots are in our favor, 17-14, but we're down by a goal. Come on, guys. This might be our last home game of the season if we lose this one. Come on, guys. Let's get the win here. I don't want to go back to Winnipeg. <laughs> Being down in the series, please. Power play opportunity in the third period. We do not score on it, surprisingly, because our power play has been pretty good. Ah, oh, and Malkin makes it 3-1. That's the dagger, probably. Yep, Sadin makes it 4-1. We're going to be on the brink of elimination here in round two. And, of course, again, it has to be against the team that I'm going to be doing as my next franchise mode series. Kalpin got us back in the board, but Delorier scores a late goal as well. That was an empty net goal, so I guess we were down by two, but still pulled their goalie, which makes sense. Uh, we head to Winnipeg, trailing in the series. We need a road win, or else the season is done. Vance from Holly and Yokola, Kalpanen from Bennett and Coburn. Oh man, that sucks. If we didn't have that bad of a second period, that would have been closer. But that third period, we kind of just fell off a little bit. Damn, man. Damn, damn, damn. <laughs> Let's uh, go ahead and adjust our lines. Right now, it looks like San Jose is going to be going to the Western Conference Finals. Montreal is clawing back in their series, but the Caps have eliminated the Rangers. Interesting, okay. Let's see what we could do here to try and get our team to force the game seven. Let's go uh, Burst top line, Bennett. Actually, Bennett's been so good, though. So let's go Burst second line, maybe. Atkinson. I don't want Neal as a fourth liner, though. That doesn't really make much sense. Uh, anybody that here should be thrown in the lineup. Kudobin, maybe, but he's a two-way forward. He's not really an offensive guy. Maybe we'll put... Oh, Coburn and Holly don't work well together, apparently. Uh, maybe with Bennett down the middle, actually, that will work better. I don't like Dallas Bruce on the top line. We're going back to Vance on the top line. Actually, wait a sec. Vance could win face-offs. I could put Vance down the middle. And we could always do something like that. Eh, I don't want to put Vance in the middle. I think we're going to do Vance for this time on the top line, because this might be the last game for him. And then, yeah, Dallas Bruce, third line. Because Dallas Bruce, to me, has been kind of struggling. Two goals in 11 games as a, like a power forward sniper. He's been getting outplayed by Vance, so... I could always go to Holly on the top line instead and then go Vance with Ben and Coburn. You know what? Actually, that's going to be what are we do. Because Holly's been our best player by far. Nine goals in 11 games. And he's got 14 points. Might as well give the best player some ice time. And uh, aside from that... I think that's what we're going to run. I might go actually back to this again because we've been sacrificing defense a bit. And then, yeah, Devin's been good. He's going to be our guy. we got to win two straight games. Can we do it and get ourselves to the conference finals or will we fall short here in the second round? Like I said, this Jets team is really good, so I don't, uh, I'm not surprised that we're trailing in the series. But here we go, real-time simulation. Looking to fight off elimination and get ourselves to a game seven. We score early, and it's Johnny Hawley on the power play. Hawley's been fantastic. That's his 10th goal already in 12 games. 
yeah holly is definitely breaking out this year he didn't have actually a really crazy offense this season in terms of goal scoring this year i think he had like 27 goals but he's proving himself that he's probably going to be a 40 goal scorer as early as next year so we're up one nothing after one with the shots 14 to 10 that's a good start now we need to get our depth going a bit let's get vance scoring coburn scoring dallas bruce scoring and uh, get some insurance here come on boys Second period is underway, still down, or not, still not down by a goal, still up by a goal, but still down by a game in the series. Can we get some insurance here in the second period to hopefully give us a better chance? Erat ties it up. Damn it, man. That's not good. That is not good at all. And it's going to be, oh, it's not going to be 1-1. Atkinson finally decides to score, and Wharton does as well. We score two goals in the final 30 seconds of the second period. That is huge. That is absolutely huge. Those two goals might be able to get us to a Game 7 situation. And it's two guys that haven't been scoring a lot. Wharton's been kind of more assisting. Atkinson had no points really at all up to this point. So it's really good to see him get on the board. Sometimes it got to take those uh, unsung guys to uh, get going. Let's lock this game down here in the third and get to a Game 7 back on home ice. Come on, boys. Just got to lock it down. Penalty kill. Nicely done. Final 10 minutes of this third period. Still up by a pair of goals. Final 5 minutes. Power play. And there's another goal from Curtis Coburn. He's been great on the power play. It's 4-1. to one. And we will be going to a Game 7 back on home ice to decide on who gets to the conference finals against probably, my guess, San Jose. So Hawley's 10th from Kelpin and Coburn. Atkinson from Gustafson and Laxo. Wharton from Carter and Benino. And Coburn from Wharton and Burrish. And yeah, Devin had another good game. Devin's been really good. Way better than I expected, considering that we lost Tayuk, and I thought Devin was not going to do that well. He has outperformed himself for sure. And now we have a game seven here in round two. And apparently, San Jose and Seattle are also going to a game seven. And you have a guaranteed matchup in the East Philly and Washington. Hmm. I think we got to roll with the exact same lines again. I think we got to. Because I don't think there's anything I want to change really about this team. Hmm. Yeah, I think that's good. And goalie-wise, yeah, obviously we go with Devin. Devin's got a 918 save percentage through 12 games. So he has been doing his best. For sure. We could always try and bring in uh, Bielak to bring in some offense to our blue line a little bit. Because Benino doesn't really do much, but Benino's plus three. I don't really want to screw with things that much. I like Belak. Is he making a minus? Let me take a look at this. Ah, uh, it's even still. Maybe if we run into offensive trouble, if we get to the next round, we could put Belak in. But for now, Benino is going to stay in. So, okay, game seven of the second round. Can we get ourselves to the conference finals for the second straight year, or will we come up just short? With a game seven loss. Let's see what happens. Come on, Vance. I know you have goals in you in this game. And hopefully Coburn and Hawley do what they've been doing this entire playoff run so far. Come on, boys. I believe in you. Oh, they score early. That's not a great sign, but we answer immediately. That is a good sign. So big scores, but guffs us and answers back. I love that depth scoring. It's good to have guys that don't normally score that often score goals. And oh, E Rat scores again. And we're down 2-1 to one going into the second period. That's a, not a good goal to give up that late in the period. e has got goals in back-to-back -back games. Can we find a way to tie this game up in the second? This is a crucial period for us in this series. Come on, boys. Let's get that next one. Come on, boys. Come on. Come on, Vance. Come on, Wharton. Come on, somebody. Atkinson. I don't really even know. Holy Penalty kill. Oh, they scored a power play goal. That might be the ball breaker here. In game seven. Unless we could get one late to get back in this game again. And no, we're going to be down by two goals going into the third. I think this uh, series is going to wrap up here. Because I can't see us scoring multiple goals in the third. But you never really know. We'll probably intervene and watch like the last little bit regardless, I think. Just because obviously I want to see uh, the players out there again for one last time. But... If that we are to get eliminated. But let's go down to four times simulation. See if we could claw back into this at all. If we could get one goal here early on. Which we do. 
that could help us out a lot, but they answer immediately. Are you kidding me? When we, when we need saves, Devin doesn't do it, but when he gets like wins, he saves the puck a lot, but not there. That is a big goal to give up right afterwards. I thought we were going to get back in this game, and then we give up a goal immediately afterwards. Yeah, I think we're going to get eliminated here unless we could get one here soon. No, we don't. Goldman scores. Yep, we're getting eliminated here in the second round in Game 7 after last year losing in the Cup Finals. But we're still going to intervene and watch this because I do want to just see the guys out there for one more time. So that way we can maybe get some good uh, screenshots of these dudes or see what these guys are looking like. That sucks, man. Not close to uh, getting ourselves to another Conference Finals, but we come up just shy. At least we got to see another season of Vance because uh, I wasn't expecting him to uh, not retire last offseason. So, Bruce to Yokola. Can we get back in this game at all? Probably not. Here's Dallas Bruce, who is not that great in this playoff run. Burrish walks in, can't get the shot through. Good hit there from Bruce. And then good hit there from Brookbank. Here's Burrish wide in, and he shoots in a big save by their goaltender. Jeez. Good chance there for Burrish. Yokola to Bruce. Bruce shoots, another save. At least we're getting some chances here. But we're still, like, way too late. Yeah, that goal that we gave up right after we got back within one was not a good thing to give up. Because if we would have been within one still, we could have gotten back into this game. But now they have multiple goals to uh, lead this one. Which is unfortunate. It's kind of funny, though, that we get eliminated literally by the team I do next in franchise mode. But I'm excited for the Jet series. It's going to be a, quite a bit of fun, I think. For sure, here's Bruce, he scores. Okay, of course, now Dallas Bruce scores but within two, but there's only two minutes left. But we do get to see a Dallas Bruce goal, which is kind of nice, considering this guy hadn't done much in the series. Picks up his third goal of the playoffs. Johnny Hall is actually leading the entire league in points in the playoffs right now, but he's going to get knocked out in round two. That's unfortunate. He would have been an early Conn Smythe favorite for sure. Here's Kelpin, and can we get back within one? Johnny Hall, he can't get in. Imagine we somehow came back in this game. I doubt it, though, because there's not a lot of time. Lidstrom has been a difference maker for them. Sucks that we could not get a franchise player in the draft. <laughs> Lidstrom again holds on to it. Can't get by it. Lidstrom again. Oh, jeez. Man, get away. My boys, nice hit there from... Who is that? I don't even know. But we couldn't get uh, position on it. Down into the final 45 seconds. Yeah, it's too late. If we didn't give up that immediate goal right afterwards, this game could have been tied or we could have been down by only a goal instead of two. Big hit there. Jeez, we've been throwing our weight around here. Here's Weston Wharton. Are we going to pull the goaltender? Yes, we do. Wharton with it. Holds up. Gets by. Still with it. Finds Johnny Hall. a shot. That's turned away by their goaltender. Neil can't get it. Here's a poke to the net and another save. Yeah, man, this sucks, but hey, at least last year we almost won another cup, but if we would have won the cup there, I would have been happy ending the series right there. Curtis Coburn walks into Johnny Hall, he has shot in glass to save. Wow, those two really looking good. Hawley's wearing 72, kind of reminds me of Panarin <laughs> when he uh, was with Chicago. Uh, Jamie Neal up there and hits. Yeah, Jamie Neal is like a solid addition to this team too at the beginning of the season. But it didn't work out, unfortunately, for this team. Bennett wins the draw. Kelpin in a quick shot doesn't work. Bennett another chance. Vance shoots. That's stopped. And that's how the series is going to end with a Vance shot that gets stopped. We get eliminated in game seven of round two. And now this episode will turn into a little bit of a recap. I will probably have still a save file of this. So if, uh, Jeff, if you're watching this episode, if you want me to go through player stats, I can definitely find out. All that type of information if there's players that I miss or something like that. But we're going to stop to see the retirements and all that stuff in this episode. That's unfortunate going out in the second round here. Thought we would have had a better run to it. But at least Vance got the last shot of the series. It's kind of like a storybook way to end it in that sense. Would have been better with a Stanley Cup win. But Asher Vance gets the last shot on goal here from the slot. That gets stopped. But let's see Vance out there again. For one last time, there is the man. There is the man. Let's take a look who else is out there and take a look at the bench as well, since this is the final episode. There is Kelpin at the point. We've barely seen this guy. He's pretty good, though. 
I do like him a lot. Turned out to be a really solid pick. And then we also have, I think that is, yeah, that's Kachuk. Another solid defenseman. He's actually wearing the A, which is interesting. Probably because Recky got sent down. Uh, who else we got here? Curtis Coburn, one of the youngsters. Starting to come into his own. We also have down here. We have Yokola. Why is Yokola so in deep? He's a friggin' defenseman. But he was like literally right in front of the net in the last little bit. There he is. With the aviator. Or not the aviator. The tilt advisor. Uh, and then we have uh, Bennett. Who was a pretty solid addition to this team as well. This has been in an via free agency. A few years ago. Let me actually go back a little bit. See if he's. So I could get a better look at him. Maybe for a screenshot. There he is. There is Bennett. The referee right underneath him. <laughs> um, let's take a look at the players on the bench though. Let's take a look at these boys. Just skim through this lineup a little bit. 28. Who is that? I think that's Burrish, right? Yeah, it's Burrish. So we got Parker Burrish right there. Let's actually get them all looking forwards. Yeah, so there's Parker Burrish. Number 10. I still think of Tony Amonte. It's Weston Wharton. So there's Weston Wharton. We go over here to 97. I think that's a defenseman, right? No, that's Atkinson. Okay. 49. I don't know who that is. Oh, that's Neil. That's the new addition from the Arizona Coyotes. 39. That's Dallas Bruce right there. We know from his goal. Uh, number 72. Who did we say that was again? Oh, that was Johnny Hawley, right? Yeah, Hawley's already got an A on his chest too. That's the young guy, but he looks very old. Then we have 43, which is Laxo, the fourth liner. And we have 56. I don't really know who that is either. <laughs> Guffs is in. Then we have number four here, which is Brookbank. So a couple of like bottom six guys at the moment. There is Devin. We don't get to see Tyupkin because of the injury, of course. 41, that is Raymond Carter with his white gloves. 62, that must be his defensive partner. Yeah, it's Benino, the young defenseman. And finally, at the end here, we have the backup goaltender, which is Hanzus, the rookie, and Mera, who we brought in from Minnesota. So there is the team, and there is the coaching staff as well. This guy has a weirdly weird-looking face. His nose looks very small. Oh, and is that Zach Parise? Yeah, I think Zach Parise was on our coaching staff, right? Yeah, I think that's Parise. Isn't he on our coaching staff? Yeah, I think that's Zach Parise. That has to be Zach Parise. And then the fans behind him look very not happy. This guy has his teeth going through his mouth. What the heck? Oh my god, that might have to be an emote in my Discord. God damn. Okay, so there is that. Now we got to get into some of the player stats. And also see the retirements and who wins the cup and the awards in this final season. So I'll probably take a look at the awards and retirements first and then the player stats. But yeah, this is going to be a very long episode at this rate. And yeah, we would have faced San Jose if we would have won that game. I bet you Sylvan Parks is going to get another Stanley Cup. I also should take a look at the record book, at least for us. I won't take a look for the rest of the league. I'll take a look at like uh, league-wide awards, our records and our records, but I'm not going to take a look at every single team because or else this episode will be way, way too long. And it already is pretty long at this point. And Tayugin is back from his injury, of course. Let me just send Hanzus down. Boom. Not that it really matters because we were eliminated. Boom. Okay, who's going to win the Stanley Cup in the last season? It's the Philadelphia Flyers. And Iowa wins the Calder Cup. So Philadelphia, the Cup champions. Who was on the roster in that Cup winning season? I want to take a look at that too. Because I don't know if there's any former players there in Philly. Let's see. Skylar Cox wins another Stanley Cup after leaving us. He was with Toronto too and I think won a Cup. Anybody else? Brandon Bennett, don't know who you are. Oh, there's the Matt Parrott guy. Yeah, that Matt Parrott guy was great. That guy was great. Hmm. Yeah, that's the only guy I recognize. Dinkos Melnick as well, actually, from Minnesota. I remember him for sure. 
So there is that. Let's take a look at the final playoff tree as well. So Philly beat San Jose in the Cup Finals in six games. Philly had a pretty damn good run. Pretty damn good run for that Cup. Let's take a look at the final season awards here. So Philly wins the Stanley Cup. Vancouver won the President's Trophy and it was San Jose Philly in the Cup Finals. That was the second Cup Final San Jose has been to in the last five years. Um, Carolina, Charlie Gardner wins his third straight Art Ross. This guy's starting to come into his own quite a bit. And he also won the Hart. Uh, Denisov wins the Norris. The Lady Bing goes to Vico for Florida. Lindstrom won the Calder for Winnipeg, and he was the difference maker in our series pretty much. Uh, the Conn Smythe in the playoffs went to Marsh, which I don't remember which position that guy played, but he was on the Flyers, obviously. Tyukin does win the Vesna despite getting injured after 58 games, I think it was, or 56 games. Let's go. At least we go out with a Vesna winner. So shout out to Tyukin for finally coming into his zone near the end of the series and winning at least uh, some hardware. And then Clapperton and Zubov were the Jennings winners. Gunderson, the Master 10 for Colorado. A female coach won the Jack Adams. That might be the first time in this series and might be the first time in NHL history. So that's really cool for the New York Rangers in Darling. Keeping won the Selkie for Anaheim. Charlie Gardner, the Lindsay. And then uh, Robichaux in Greening tied for the Richard. AHL-wise, any awards for our AHL guys? Doesn't seem like it. Damn. But yeah, I'm really happy with Tayupkin. Very happy. So there is the final awards. Now what we got to do is look through every player's stats. Actually, no, we got to take a look at the retirements first because we might lose Vance, so we might as well do that here. And then if he doesn't retire, obviously we'll take a look at everybody's stats after the season ends and see what their career stats were like. And uh, then we will probably go over to the record book and all that i know this episode's like an hour long but i hope that you're still sticking around for it will vance retire at the end of this series it would be a storybook for him to do it so wouldn't be surprised if he does it let's see vance will you retire no are you serious connor recce does though after a year in the ahl we didn't even take a look at his stats in the ahl but Asher Vance did not retire, which means I might have to honestly play more of this outside of YouTube, which is kind of exciting because I could just play it at my own pace. But wow. Wow. Okay, let's go through everybody first that retired. So uh, these are the best goalies that retired. I don't know any of them. Except for Svitov, I recognize him though. Um, defensively, the guy that went first overall before Vance, I think. Yeah, Callie Christensen retires. Gustav Solovyov retires, our former fifth round pick, if you guys remember him. Pretty solid career for Solovyov. Cameron Kavanaugh also retires, another former guy that didn't have a long time with us. Solid career for him. A lot of time in Dallas, spent the last year in Vegas. There is Kavanaugh. Um, why do I recognize Bear Del Zotto, Carolina? I don't know where I know him from. Anybody else that I know... I retired here on the defensive side of things. But Vance did not retire. Yes, he would have been the highest point getter on the retirement club. Of course, he didn't retire. <laughs> but yeah, Connor Recchi does retire with 862 points to lead the right wingers. 1,310 games played. And here is his final stat line. He had a pretty good year in the AHL. 50 points. Minus 8, though. But I was not going to play him at the NHL levels of 76. Just didn't really make sense, but there is his final career numbers. Shout out to Recky, one of the better players in the series. He was a fourth round pick, really good steal. I really like that guy. What else we got here? Wow, Malkin retires for Winnipeg after uh, they knocked us out. Didn't realize that guy was that old. What else we got here? Anything else? No. Left wing wise, Gavin McKenna already retires too, which is nuts because that guy was a really good player in the series. Any former players of ours? Uh, let's see. No, not on the left wing side. How about center wise? Berkeley Catan's the best I've retired on center. See, that's why Vance didn't retire. Skylar Cox retires as the Stanley Cup champion, so 
our uh, former centerman that we had for a little bit that we brought in from the New York Rangers. I'm pretty sure he went on and won two Stanley Cups at least, maybe three even. But yeah, he was a pretty good player. We only had him for three years. But yeah, pretty solid player in the series. And I think that is it. Yeah, that's it for retirement. So the only player we lose is Recky this year. And like I said, I'll probably end up having to play more of this outside of YouTube because I, that means Vance will hit a thousand goals, but not in this YouTube universe. Like he won't have it in the record book because everything I do outside of the YouTube doesn't count to the record book. So, but Vance will finish with probably a thousand goals if he comes back to the NHL next year, which is dope. So salute to Recky. Best of luck to him in retirement. And we did not lose any coaches, so that is good. Not that it really matters at this stage. Um, and that's all good. Okay, final things we got to do to wrap up this series now. We'll take a look at every player on our roster, their careers, numbers, and all that. Then we will look at the record book for the entire NHL and also for our team, and then I'll be it. So yeah, I apologize that this episode is so long, but it is what it is. So let's uh, go through our entire team. Let's just go through this screen to make it easier. So let's start off with our goaltenders. Marion Tayupkin coming off of Vesna Trophy winning season. He had a 923 through 56 games, and it was enough to get him that Vesna. Pretty solid player here, to be honest. He might be the best goalie in this series that we've had other than Aiden Howden. Not the best playoff goaltender, but who knows? Maybe he would have been good this year if he didn't get hurt. So there is Marion Tayupkin, former second round pick in 2037. Uh, then we have Dylan Devin, who uh, actually played really good in the playoffs. Had a really good year his uh, first year with us as a backup. Afterwards, he started to drop off quite a bit as a backup. But playoff-wise this year, he was really well, uh, really good. So it helped us get to that second round and almost to the conference finals. So there is Dylan Devin, former pick of the Colorado Avalanche, who didn't get a chance until we signed him, I think. Defensively, Raymond Carter, who we brought in from the New York Rangers a few years ago, played three and a half years with Chicago. Pretty good shutdown defenseman. Not as good this season in defensively, but still. Helped out actually with the offense a little bit too, which is kind of nice. But more of a defensive defenseman in a way. So there is Raymond Carter. We head to uh, Yokola, who's starting to drop off quite a bit. He is a pending free agent this offseason, which is interesting. I didn't even realize that, but this guy was a great addition. We brought him in from the Colorado Avalanche to help us out on the defensive side of things and the offensive side of things from the back end. And he was pretty good. A lot of 40, 60 point seasons. Definitely some injury troubles near the end, but yeah, he was really good the last two playoffs. 30 points through those last uh, 39 playoff games. So, Yokla was a really good addition. Then we head to Kelpinen, who was drafted by us in the 6th round. What a steal he was. Very solid DFD. He does also pick up some points, like he just came off his career high in points. So I like that quite a bit. The finish, man. And yeah, his playoff numbers have also been pretty good. 16 points in 47 games. Uh, then we also have Kachuk, who's also a pending free agent. There's a lot of pending free agents, so maybe I don't play another year after this. Even though I want to see Vance hit 1,000 goals. but Because I kind of screwed us up with the cap situation because I thought Vance was going to retire. <laughs> so yeah, t k uh, Taylor Kachuk, pretty solid the DFD as well. Not as good in the playoffs defensively, but former 28th overall pick of ours. Solid. We brought in Mero this season, so he only played 25 games with us regular season-wise, 13 in the playoffs. But still, a welcome addition in terms of shutting down opponents. So I did like the addition of Mera, even though it didn't work out. And then Benino has been a solid top six defenseman. Hasn't been really much more than that, but I don't mind this guy. He was the 11th overall pick, so maybe not the best pick for that spot, but... At least he became an okay top six guy for us. We then head to our offensive core, Fred Brookbank. Uh, one of those guys that started coming into his own. Had a better rookie year, better full rookie season than he did this season, technically in terms of goals, but points were a little bit more. Um, yeah, I like Fred Brookbank a lot. I think he would have been a future piece for this team for 
couple years at least. Holly and uh, Coburn and Bruce might have taken over a spot more so, but yeah, Brookbank is a pretty good player. Former second round pick too, so another good steal. Then we head to the left wingers, Curtis Coburn. Love Curtis Coburn a lot. He has been really, really solid. Like 30 goal plus goals every year of his career so far, and he, this year he almost hit 50. So Curtis Coburn starting to come into his own. Really solid playoffs as well for him. Not the best on the defensive front in the playoffs, especially last year when we went to the Cup Finals, but he's a really good offensive guy. Then we had the Johnny Hawley, who might have been a future captain here as well. Former first overall pick in 2042. Coburn was the former fourth overall pick the year before then. And yeah, Johnny Hawley is starting to come out quite a bit. Has not hit 30 goals in the regular season yet, but he definitely would have done it last year or this next season. And in the playoffs, he had a really good breakout party. Last two years, 36 points in 44 games. Well, 36 points in his last, I guess, 39 games, actually. His first year, he didn't have anything. So yeah, Johnny Hawley's been pretty good. So there is Hawley. We did have Weston Wharton, who we brought in from the Coyotes, former ninth overall pick of theirs. He has been a great playmaker, and without him, I don't think the top six would probably simulate as well. He was a really good setup guy for four seasons with us. And then playoff-wise, he's also been really good too. So, like Wharton a lot. We had the Dallas Bruce, former second-round pick of ours as well, so another good steal. He had a really good regular season these last few years, but the playoffs, on the other hand... Eh, wasn't really sold on his performance this year. I mean, it wasn't bad, 7 points in 13 games, but last year he had 14 goals in the 26 games. This year, only 3 in 13 this time around. So, we needed a little bit more out of Dallas Bruce, but he would have still been a very good addition for this roster for many years. Then we have Gustafson, uh, who had 29 points. He's more of a fourth-line option. Kind of an okay player, but didn't really live up to the expectation that I thought he would. Also a second round pick, so I mean at least he was another solid steal. There's also this Janes guy, which I completely forgot about, honestly. That he could have been in the NHL this season, but he wasn't. This guy would have been probably a good player to get into our NHL lineup soon. But uh, we didn't get him in this season. Then we have Vyacheslav Kudobin, who did not play a single regular season game with us, but he played three games in the playoffs as a depth option because of that injury. So there is Kudobin. Uh, then we also have Yanni Lakso, who is the fifth round pick of ours in 2036, so a very good steal. Only two years in the NHL, but solid depth uh, slash fourth line guy. Not the most offensive, but solid defensive. So there is that. We then head over to the centers. Carl Bennett, who we brought in from, I believe it was Buffalo, right? Yeah, it was Buffalo. Three years here. Pretty solid performance, nonetheless. 50 to 70 points. I like it. Solid playoffs as well. Last year, he was fantastic when we went to the Cup Finals. This year, kind of a little bit more quiet, but still on pace for like a maybe 20-point playoff performance, which is really good. So there is Carl Bennett. Then we had to uh, Jamie Neal, who we brought in from Arizona. Had a pretty solid year here. His best year since 2041. And in the end, the playoffs, he had only five points, so he didn't really do as much as we were hoping for playoff-wise, but still, I think he helped us out a little bit. So there's Jamie Neal. Then we have Lane Atkinson, who we brought in from the Los Angeles Kings. Only two years here, but relatively solid in the regular season. Very quiet in the playoffs. Like, you only have 13 points in 39 playoff games. Eh, it's not ideal. So yeah, Lane Atkinson definitely needed to be better as well this year but he wasn't. Then we have uh, Parker Birch, who has been an okay player at times. Last year had 51 points, this year 38. And playoff-wise, he was pretty good, though, with 8 assists in 13 games. He's not a bad player. Bit expensive contract-wise, but still not too bad. Former last pick of the first round in 2035, so 10 seasons ago. And then finally, Asher Vance, the man, the myth, the legend, 990 goals in the series, 1,622 games played, and yeah, well over point per game, plus 346. If I am to play this outside of YouTube, he should easily hit the 1,000 goal plateau, which is crazy because I've never had a player hit 1,000 goals, but Vance was the lifeline this entire series. 
he had really good takeaway numbers this year compared to last year, which is really weird. For being that old to have 114 takeaways, maybe I should have played him as a center this year, and then maybe he would have wanted like a Selkie. But yeah, Vance was a machine. And playoff-wise, over point per game as well. I think this might be a good point since it's not even play many more, even though I could see him hit a thousand goals. Like he's over point per game regular season wise, playoff wise. If I did another season after this on my own time, he'd probably end up like going below point per game. But what a career for Vance. That was his lowest goal total in a long, long time. But this guy scored 50, 60 goals a lot. A lot. Like, I don't think I've ever had such a prolific goal scorer. But, I mean, Avery Parrot was really good in uh, Anchorage, too. So there is Vance. I don't think anybody got sent to DHL. Let me double check, though. Yeah, there's nobody in the AHL as well. Actually, there is one, I guess. There is Pete Bilak. 57 games with 10 points plus 12. No playoff games. But he probably would have been a mainstay on the defensive core at some point. But there is definitely a lot of good AHL players that could get into the NHL if I was to do more seasons of this. But there is that. And that is almost it. I didn't actually show you guys Hanzus' stats. We'll show you that too. Three games with some really good numbers. And yeah, at least he got his first NHL win. So there is Philippe Hanzus. And that is our player stats. Now, final thing, the record book, because this episode's almost an hour, 15 minutes long. Let's take a look at the record book stuff and wrap this up. So let's uh, only go to our team. So we'll start off with our own personal records, and we'll look at the league records. So Asher Vance, obviously the best point getter in Chicago Blackhawks history. Didn't get up there past Sam Mikita in seasons, but there is a chance he could have if he didn't retire. Um, so there is a chance he could have passed the 22 win or 22 seasons. Uh, assist wise, Sam Mikita still number one, so nobody got to pass Stan Mikita even close to it. Uh, games played wise, Asher Vance, not a surprise. Penalty minutes, Asher Vance currently, but the best all time in terms of penalty minutes was uh, Chris Chelios. Uh, shutout wise, uh, still obviously Tony Esposito can't beat that, but Tayupkin was the best in this series, and he was the best in wins as well, because I guess we didn't hold on to uh, Howden that long. And then goals all time, of course, Asher Vance. Season records. Uh, the most shutouts uh, current team record-wise is Tayupkin, but obviously he's not going to break the 15 that Esposito had, I think, in his rookie year, if I remember right. And uh, games played doesn't really matter too much because that's always just broken anyways. Well, it's not really broken, but it's always the same thing. Pelly minute-wise, the most for us right now was Yokel. Obviously, nobody's going to break Mike Peluso's 408. Uh, goals in a season with 67 from Vance. That is a Chicago Blackhawks record. And also point-wise, he didn't break Denny Savard's record, but he came close to it. Assist-wise, in this year's was Weston Morton with 69 assists in the season. Didn't break Denny Savard's 87, but came kind of close-ish. And then uh, Tayukin had 32 wins in a season, but the most in a season all-time by a Chicago Blackhawks goaltender, Easton Donald, 46 wins back in 2033. We had two rookie records. None of them were broken. Patrick Kane's rookie assist record still there. Rookie goal record was not broken by Vance. It was Steve Larmer still. So those were untouched. And we head to game records. Nothing was broken there either. So nobody was able to break Max Bentley's 7 points in a game. Or Grant Mulvey's 5 goals in a game. Which is kind of a surprise when Vance is a goal scoring machine. So there's our personal records. Let's take a look at the league wide records. See where Vance finished at all time in goals. So, games played-wise, he was not up there. Uh, games played-wise for goaltenders, obviously, wouldn't be up there. But most goals all time, Asher Vance finishes number two. Look who is right behind him. Sylvain Parks, it says, with 989. I got to double-check on Sylvain Parks after this. And Benjamin Jacina. So, I will take a look at those two guys after this. But Vance is almost the... Only the second player in NHL history to hit 1,000 goals, but Ovechkin still has more than him, which is kind of nuts. Uh, most points all time, still Gretzky, nobody up there close. It says Patrick Kane up there, but I don't remember if he had that much. I don't think he did in the series. Um, yeah, it says Kane had over 1,000 assists. I don't know if he did. 
Most wins by a goaltender. Nobody was close to being up there. Sylvain Parks had the most 50 goal seasons though in NHL history. So um, salute to Sylvain Parks. Definitely the better half of Asher Vance. In a sense. Him and uh, Vance were back and forth a lot in terms of goal scoring. Ovechkin was tied with Vance in 50 goal seasons. Uh, 100 point season. Sylvain Parks was number 4. Sylvain Parks might have been the best player in the series. For sure. That wasn't on our team. Because to get up there in 100 point seasons and 50 goal seasons, that's incredible. He was tied with Mario Lemieux in one behind McDavid, but nowhere close to Gretzky. <laughs> uh, season records. Anything get broken here? Probably not. Just because the 80s were crazy. Uh, there is one record. <laughs> it is <clears throat> It is our former goaltender Drew Camesso breaking the wins record. I don't think that was with us. I could be wrong. 15 seasons ago. He led the NHL with 49 wins, and that's a record beating out Brodeur and Holtby. And final thing, rookie records. Anything get broken? Probably not, right? Because a lot of these are very tough to beat. Yep, no rookie records were broken. Let me take a look at Jacina and Sylvain Parks. Just to see if they actually did have that much goals compared to Vance. Uh, player search. Maybe I should have signed Sylvain Parks a few years ago. Would have been interesting to see what he would have done with us. But then again, we have a lot of young guys that uh, were really good, so it's like, eh. So, Sylvain Parks, still in San Jose, almost won a Stanley Cup this year. Still making a lot of money. And, no, he has 833 goals, so he's not even that close to Vance right now. But he is still well over point per game. Still having a lot of 50-goal seasons and 100-point seasons as well. Especially in his time in Montreal. Like, look at this. That stretch is absolutely insane. Jeez. And he definitely has regressed, but he's almost had 100-point seasons in San Jose, too. Yeah, this guy was a beast. Nearly won the Conn Smythe, probably, if the San Jose Sharks would have won the Stanley Cup. And we beat this guy in the Stanley Cup Finals for our only Stanley Cup win. <laughs> what an animal this dude was. And then also, let's take a look at Jacina too, while we're at it. So Jacina's probably not even close. So, Asher Vance is definitely the best goal scorer in the series, but that uh, record book is a little bit broken. Yeah, Jacina's still in San Jose as well. He's dropping off a lot too. Yeah, he is also a very good goal scorer. 70 goals one year. Not point per game, but 796 in his career is really good. There are some damn good goal scorers. He was also up there for the Conn Smythe probably this year. So there is that. Um, I don't think there's really anybody left from the 2025 draft. I want to see if there's anybody left from uh, from Vance's draft class or if he's the last remaining. So 2025, so anybody that's like 37 to 40, we'll put, I guess. I just want to see if there's anybody that went around the same time that I recognize. And then I'll probably end this episode after that. Uh, yeah, I'll we'll go 37 and older. Let's see. Uh, Christensen was the guy that actually went first overall. It was the other Christensen that retired, I think. Maybe not. No, this is the other Christensen, the Islanders one. So that is not the one that went before Vance. That one just did retire. Um, but uh, you have Bobby Fuller, who was actually a first overall pick the year after Vance. You have Marcel Delorier, who was drafted the year after Vance. And you have Binock, who was drafted two years after Vance. Which means I think Vance is the last man standing from his draft class. As it should be. As it should be. There is Tom Moran's as well for goalies, actually. But not that it really matters on the goalie front. But on the offensive front, yeah, Vance is the last man remaining. Well, anyways, guys, that's going to do it for this long-ass finale episode. I guess it's good that uh, we didn't win the Stanley Cup because or else we would have been here for two hours. But if you watched the this, thank you so much for watching it. And if you watched any episode of the series, I really appreciate it. I had a lot of fun with the series at points. Also, I had a lot of tough times in the series too. But really happy to uh, have a really good player like Asher Vance uh, do so well for us because it's always fun to have those type of guys where you draft and your entire careers are spent with one team. And you see them end up breaking NHL records and all that type of thing. But 
Anyways, that's going to do it, guys, for NHL 23 content. So I'll see you guys up here shortly, I guess, in the next few days with some NHL 24 content as we start up our Winnipeg Jet series and our Halifax uh, Raiders, I almost said Rain series as well, which is going to be a Draft Glory series. So let me guys think down below, and I'll see you guys in NHL 24.